Hello and welcome to Form First Podcast. I'm Laura. And I'm Peter. We are the founders of Form First Fitness Oh, app. yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> this podcast focuses on the sport of indoor rowing. We cover topics ranging from health, training, injury prevention, and how technology can help us as athletes to get better while staying healthy. As you know, we like to boil down complex sports science topics. We also try to bring you some of the latest research from the field of rowing and technology. And we quite often bring along some very, very cool guests on our podcast. Yeah. So join us today for another episode of Form First Podcast. And we'll be talking about live events. And yeah, online, online events, online events uh, more precisely. So yeah, let's go. Cool. All right, today we're going to be talking about live events. I mean, uh, it's one of the it's one of the bigger topics, uh, I would say, in the current situation with uh, coronavirus and a yeah. lot of the live events uh, on water being cancelled for this year, and you know some qualifications postponed and etc. You know, so yeah, I mean, definitely a lot of uh, a lot of people are affected by this. I mean, not just sports, but you know, like even. Even schools, you know, people now yeah. have to ha attend classes, you know, online. Yeah, I mean, so. a lot of, as you know, of course, uh, you know, it presents a lot of challenges, but I think also, um, you know, it presents a lot of challenges for sport. And, you know, some sports have been a little bit better at kind of coping with, um, so to say, online uh, options, inversions, stay at home uh, workouts and so on. And some has been definitely worse. I mean, I can imagine yeah. team sports really suffering. Yeah, definitely. But also there is the aspect of equipment. Like yes. you have to have the equipment at home exactly. to actually perform. Exactly. And that is tricky. And we definitely saw how at some point all the all the, all the Concept 2 rowers just disappeared from <laughs> everywhere. Like secondhand, firsthand distributors, official side and so on. Yeah. Uh, so completely under understandable. And uh, we kind of don't know when that's going to... That's going to end. I mean, some countries are kind of coming out of it. We are um, in Denmark and some of the rowing clubs have been uh, open uh, in a couple of weeks back with, of course, some restrictions. But but still, people can go on water uh, little by little. But I don't really think that we're going to uh, anytime soon have events, um, you know, live the way the way the way we normally have, you know, yeah. with uh, with spectators and, uh, you know, a full range of athletes, ages and etc. So, well, one thing is like, yeah, in, in real life. We, yeah. we probably there there will be some delay until we see those events come back, but uh, these virtual events are definitely gaining a lot of popularity. Definitely, these days. they're all over. Uh, they're all over because you know the fact that we stay at home doesn't mean that um, you know we don't want to compete or we don't want to challenge ourselves. And I think a lot of people even see uh, challenging themselves in the in the sense of sport is very very important part of kind of keeping their sanity. I would say, <laughs> yeah, uh, definitely for me. Is. Definitely for me. I mean, since we started, you know, we got back at like training regularly. I could, I think I told you like one of the best things I've, I've you know, kind of felt was uh, uh, definitely my mood improved and I felt like so much better, not only physically, but mentally as well. So they're all over the place, those challenges and, you know, uh, Facebook groups and online challenges and online events. Um, and one thing that really, really caught my attention was announcement on a uh, World of Rowing website um, that uh, announced announced uh, maybe a week or two ago uh, that, you know, the 2021 um, event, you know, World Rowing Championship, uh, Indoor Rowing Championship will go online and live. Whoa. Nice. So, we've, so we've seen online events here and there. We have seen a lot of challenges. Concept2 runs a lot of those. And, you know, there are quite a few, uh, maybe not anymore for this year because they're already, you know, kind of passed. And, you know, if everything was going as expected, you know, now we're going to be going into season for like on the, on the water rowing events and so on, which are now canceled or postponed. But so there are not too many indoor rowing events scheduled, uh, as it looks right now for this year, but, um, even like planning the 2021 event and they don't specify much on the article. And we're definitely going to put a link on the article uh, about the article in the description of the video, but they don't really mention much. Uh, they just say it's going to be online and live, which means that it's going to be online. <laughs> 
in life. Yeah, but I mean, I'm, I'm pretty <laughs> sure they have a lot of questions to figure, you know. But that's to, exactly, but that's, that's exactly what the answer. article said. It's going to be online and life, which basically means it's going to be <laughs> online and life, which yeah. means in real time. They actually do specify it's in real time. And, and actually, this is what caught my attention. Because I can only imagine, and I know there are quite a lot of challenges, and we have discussed this, of like how difficult it is. I mean, running challenges online is one thing, but running events is different. Yeah. And I think it's worth describing what we see as an event and what at least what I see as an event. I mean, for example, for you run a challenge in anybody's, you would run a challenge at a, at a longer period of time. You know, maybe a week, maybe a few days, maybe a month, maybe more. And you would allow people to kind of participate uh, within, of course, that that um, amount of time, but whenever it's convenient to them. But when you have an event, for me, an event happens within one or few consecutive days. And uh, you would, you know, kind of, you would expect that there will be a schedule and people that participate in this schedule will participate in the given time. So almost that at least in yeah. my head, an event is something that happens on a schedule. So yeah. it's not like that if, everybody is there at the same time. Shows yes, up and at they, the same time. exactly. Yeah. And if you're going to be participating in that particular part of the event, you would be there. So, I mean, that's probably like a silly example, but if we have a, a musical, fe- you know, a music festival and that band is doing a concert from, you know, two o'clock in the afternoon till, uh, you know, five, you know, you have to be there from two to five. You can't, by your choosing, listen yeah. to it yesterday or tomorrow or... Yeah, but that's that's the funny part that technology allowed us, you know, like previously, even with this example of listening to music, you yeah. know, like you had a band and you either listened to it or not. You didn't really have the opportunity to listen to it at your own pleasure, you know, at home. Yeah. And now with bit. technology, we do have that opportunity yeah. to listen to it whenever we want. Yeah, a little bit like uh, working out online. Yeah. For example, yeah, working out that, uh, you know, on Instagram, uh, you know, stories and stuff like this, you can do it live or yeah. watch it afterwards and so on. But again, it's, um, so when we talk about competition and again, events for let's come and row, I get this. But if we talk about competition events, to me, um, competing to a very, very high degree is we compete against each other right now. Like we are hit, you know, yeah. head to head. Like it, it does not. It's not like, hey, let me do something and then you do something and then I decide I want to redo it. And then maybe depending on my score, you also decide to top me up and redo it as yeah. well. Uh, so, and, 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 and no, it is just so complicated. And, and I want you just to talk a little bit about it because I think we're going to be seeing a lot of more online events in the upcoming months. Um, and, and I know that some of those events will definitely make an effort to make some of the competitions live. And I know yeah. technically that could be very challenging. Yeah, definitely. From the technical perspective, there are multiple challenges, but, uh, fortunately we all, uh, a lot of this development to online multiplayer games where yeah. the, this kind of approach originated. And we basically take a lot of the approach, the same approaches to online live events as online multiplayer games do. Mm-hmm. So, for example, let's say you are playing CSGO online. Okay. You, you wait until all the people show up or, you know, the, the lobby fills up and then you start a game. And then you are all... It's kind of like the event yeah. happens. We all get together and yeah, then we exactly. play. You are playing re- in real time against each other and you see whoever wins or, or, you know, the score after the game is over. Exactly. Which is, to me, what resembles r- real a real competition. Exactly. Exactly. Of course, there are other online multiplayer games where, or you know, they can do it multiple ways. Either this live kind of event, but they, of course, can do also challenges where people can play against, like, what you played yesterday, for example. Yeah, but this is closer to the challenges, as we said. Like, you could see uh, what other people are doing, and you can try to top it up if you you can. And these are also great, but again, that's not what I want to discuss today. Yeah, but that's... Yeah, I just wanted to mention that, you know, all the the problems are kind of... They resemble the problems in online multiplayer games. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in there, there are definitely issues... 
you know, like what happens when people lose internet connectivity. Exactly. That's the, one of the first things that Especially I thought about if it. Especially if it's real time. And if you're streaming, yeah. I mean, imagine if you're streaming, you're, you're rowing and you lose internet connection. Exactly. What happens? Then the other you players disqualify- just don't see you. Yeah. And you I can imagine, stuck. I mean, I don't think it's going to be really fair for you to get disqualified based on like poor internet connection. Yeah. However, again, that really teases up your... Because it's like you're rowing and then you flash out of it and then you flash back in yeah exactly maybe, maybe way ahead who knows exactly what well, one one aspect is the local aspect of like do you actually get disqualified well not necessarily you know like you still continue rowing the data keeps getting recorded locally on yeah. your pc or on your, on, or on your phone and then once you once the connection comes back up the data can be synced yeah again and uh you just continue as normal but the other aspect is to the other players. Mm-hmm. To the other players, you unfortunately have to look, you know, either the system kind of makes assumptions that you continue at the same pace. And, yeah. you know, if, if it's just a disconnection for, you know, a second or two, yeah. maybe nobody notices. But if it's a longer disconnection, then you will probably, you know, get stuck, you know, at least for the other player. And yeah, imagine like you're rowing, it's in a competition, and it just happens that at the same very time, Netflix is launching one of the newest, hottest <laughs> stuff, TV shows, TV yeah. shows, and then just suddenly everybody wants to watch this. And I yeah. mean, what do you do? And of course, you don't want to get disqualified, you know, because of Netflix. That. Yeah, who would like that? Um, <laughs> true. <laughs> well, um, well, I, I know um, I'm sitting there thinking because, you know, when we play games, we have like the computer as an interface, the game, the user interface that we interact you know, with the game, and it just happens that there are also other real people at real time. Yeah. But how would that happen in a concept two? Let's say, in a, let's just keep it simple because again, most of us do row on concept two. How would that happen on a concept two rower? I mean, we don't really have the same interface that we have on a on a game. It's very different. True. And true. those rowers are definitely not built to interact with each other. In yes, I know that you can link them, and they are like. You know, which is the way currently live events are done and you link the monitors and they kind of in real time show you where everybody is. But that's that's analog, isn't it? Well, that's more of a local competition, I yes. would say, style. Local uh, because they're all at the same place. Yeah, physically. exactly. They, yeah. As far as I know, they have to be connected to the same network. And that's that's one challenge. But from the technical perspective, we just need the rowers to be connected to the internet Mm -hmm. whether that's going to be done through your app like for example let's say erg data uh, app on your phone that both connects to the internet and to the rower yeah then this data just needs to be uh, streamed to their servers to the servers where uh, you know the competition is happening and then we can all see the participants Mm -hmm. and how well they are doing would you say that that would be more complicated uh, if you have to also um, include other type of rowers? Uh, definitely, we need to, again, because we are in a competition, we are trying to make a level playing field. Yeah, yeah. It's true. a little bit difficult to, true, true, true. to make sure that everybody. But again, is... because you're running it online, you can't turn around and say, oh, you have an RP3, mo- uh, you know, RP3 uh, rower. Oh, so sorry. Like, you can't really compete because. You know, we want to level out the field and, <laughs> and have only, I mean, you, you, yeah, because normally, normally the regular events and the challenges kind of allow way wider variety of rowers, water rowers also, and so on. So yeah, and then, a, and then you have to make okay. sure in that case, you need to make sure that, you know, you calibrate against the different machines and yeah. how, if there are in any differences in performance, you know, you, you don't want them to show up in That's the competition. True. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because of the machine. Or yeah, exactly. Do some post or like real life calibration, like lifetime yeah. calibration. Yeah, I can totally see. Um, so yeah, again, uh, one more issue with the, the internet connectivity is also latency. So it takes a certain amount of time for the information to be transmitted mm-hmm. to the server. And this is not uh, a great problem in uh, in sports, as far as as far as I'm aware. But it can be a problem in games, especially like for example, first person shooters, where for example you shoot, and you need to know, you know, like when you're shooting in real life. Yeah. It is very sensitive to delays. Yeah. Like for example, if I shoot 
one tenth of a second later, you need to the target them. might be at a completely different place. Yeah, because these are very kind of responsive, like yeah, very quick exactly. response. Uh, so for sports like rowing, I don't think that's super yeah. critical. In consideration that the monitor actually, and we discussed this in a, in a previous episode, the, the monitor actually shows you uh, information about the previous stroke anyway. Yeah. So you still have a latency of like probably one stroke uh, anyway of what you can yeah, exactly. see as your own performance. But, but in other sports, like, I don't know, let's say, let's say tennis or, yeah. you know, of course, those would, be, those would be way more difficult to digitalize, but uh, they would have definitely harder time getting the latency down. Do you think? Do you think that they would also they would only get you to do to submit your erg score, or in order to kind of verify, they would also get some kind of a video just proving that this is the person rowing? Do I think, think I think oftentimes a video might be required for events that are more official. Yeah, like where they want to see that you are maybe not cheating. Yeah, because or... I'm to- I'm thinking like if you if we're talking about the World Indoor Rowing Championship, I mean this is the That's big the deal. E- this is the event yeah. for indoor rowing, and I'm just saying that I can totally imagine that you would like to make sure at least if I'm running this event, I would definitely want to make sure that I am I am I'm. I'm, I'm you know, that my athletes are the way that they say they are, that when somebody rows, um, I know that this is the person rowing, it's not somebody else, um, you know, that, uh, uh, yes, I know that, you know, rowing doesn't have maybe a history of doping, and that's very difficult, but still, but at least the basic stuff, at least you want to make sure that people in the right weight class and, and uh, so to say, you know, uh, the right person is, uh, is, is kind of competing. Yeah, definitely. So you don't end up awarding, you know. Um, yeah. And also, I would say, I mean, I know that uh, people kind of don't want to talk about it, but I think it's worth saying and that nobody's tampering with a rower. It's not impossible. Yes. I mean, I, I know that every time when I when I speak to rowers and they go like, oh, no, but the community is so honest about it. I'm like, Really? Is it? Or it's just nobody has been caught really poorly? I mean, everybody thought that cycling is a very honorable sport until, you know, they kind of start coming out saying of how be- badly doped they, they were yeah. and so on and so forth. So, I mean, I'm maybe I'm a little bit more pessimistic, but I always think that it kind of, you know, we don't know. We don't know. But if I'm running an event, I would like to know that at least people are the weight class that they say they are, that when somebody says, I wrote this record, I can somehow try to verify this, maybe not live, but at least some yeah. kind of a video, um, you know, and, and at least that nobody's tampering with a machine, because that's not so difficult. We have, Correct. and we have spoken a lot about it. And, you know, if anybody wants to hear about our thoughts on how you can like very, very nastily tamper with a rower, to, with a concept to rower machine, and then we're not talking about glitches, we're talking about nasty, like ugly tampering that can make you a world champion on paper. Yeah, that's the thing. You don't need much. You can get like, you know, if you can get 15% extra, yeah, exactly. that's all you need. Yes, so. exactly. In a, in a higher level, that's all that you need. Yeah, and, but- and again, I think that for the fact that nobody talks about it doesn't mean it has ha- you don't, it doesn't have to be addressed. Correct. But yeah, verifying the results is, defi- is definitely a big problem. And one way, especially for rowing in Concept2 machines, you know, they can submit their uh, uh, kind of verification code you yes. get from the, the, from the, from the, the ERG. The, yeah, exactly. Which, uh, you know, there is special kind of security sauce that Concept2 put in to actually make sure that you did row it. Yes, but again, there's that doesn't... so many ways you can tamper with the, exactly with the with the with the you know with a part within the flywheel box exactly. that you actually can, you measures. Can, you can still make the erg think that you are rowing more than you actually yes. are. So that's, many ways. That's where the problem. And again, if anybody wants to hear yes. about it, please leave us a comment below. We have had multiple discussions, and we're happy. And I do think people have to talk about it. I mean, come on, like let's not be naive. I mean, we're you know again we're adults and. You know, I, I think that people just living with the idea that nobody will try to tamper or cheat, it almost makes me want to go and cheat just to make a point. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. mean, I know, I know, I know that sounds probably really bad. I'm, um, I would say subpar rower, as you do know very well. And it almost makes me want to go and kind of poke holes in those things. And I guess, I don't know, maybe spoil the fun for everybody, <laughs> but, but no, yeah. You know but, what I mean. But there are yeah, there are definitely a lot of differences in comparison to real uh, life events where, you know, if, for example, weighing 
even like exactly. weighing. You, you, can't, know. you can't fake this. Exactly. Everybody steps they on put the same you, scale. They put you on a scale and you don't have a choice, you know. Yeah, to exactly. Lie. What are you gonna are you gonna tear your arm off to you know yeah, save a few exactly. kilos? Yeah, Le- exactly. Leave one. Uh, yeah, exactly. One <laughs> leave one foot or one leg or yeah. So yeah, that's definitely more opportunities for cheating in these uh, online uh, live events. Yes, and then on the other side, like, should those records be as accepted as other records? Good question. Yeah. Again. It's these are these are kind of things that I guess the you know the uh, world of rowing will have to kind of um, really figure out. Um, yeah. I on one side you can't turn around and say I'm sorry, but um, you know uh, tough life. Corona happened, so your record from this year doesn't count, while somebody else's record from last year. And we saw this. I mean, uh, for example, in the in the world of uh, strongman sports, uh, you know, um, Eddie Hall was the first man to pull 500 kilos on a deadlift. Uh, Hathor Bjornsson, uh, maybe a couple of weeks back, pulled 501 kilos. Um, yes, it was at home in a home gym, but there was a judge there. It was official and he did it live on a live stream. And again, even some people then actually argued whether this should be an accepted, uh, um, you know, world record. Yeah. I mean, uh, don't want to get into details, but Eddie Hall called him uh, a little uh, home gym lifter. But he did sign his, uh, so yeah, that's what I'm saying. But when you're doing sitting there at home, you know, how, how are we going to verify those records? Is there going to be a gym? Is, is it, sorry, is got the, there going to be a judge, like a certified judge or like, how do we do that? Like, is, is, are there people to watch or people that want to submit, say, Hey, I'm planning to try to break that, this record or that record. Can you send me a judge or connect me with a judge or figure out how we can, how I can do this in a more, you know, legitimate way and not just people start coming out and say, hey, I broke that that record, this record, whatever. Because as I said, I, t- in my opinion, there's so so much, um, you know, things that could um, could be uh, kind of cheated. Yeah, definitely. I mean, and even even if, let's say, uh, a judge comes to comes to you, there's still ways, you know, like if if you are friends with the judge, you know, uh, that's, you... that's, that gets, gets a little bit into conspiracy theory, but I'm saying to of me, course. if you want to, if you want to break a record, yes, it's different to do it in a field of competition. Yeah. You know, one of the, one of the, one of the things that again, uh, about this particular record for a deadlift was criticized that they said Eddie Hall did it during a competition where you have already done other events to qualify to that point. Yeah. Or you're already have a couple of days of events. So you're more fatigued or more tired. This is not like you just come and pull and it that, that one thing. So I get this, but with rowing, I can, I can probably see that if you want to submit and you say, Hey, I'm going for breaking this record. And you, you live stream your performance to the body that will award it. And you have a certified judge to confirm that you have not tampered with a machine, that you have been weighted and, you know, and so on and so forth. I can take this. But if somebody comes around and says, hey, I wrote this this thing at home and I just did so well, I, I'm not quite sure. I'll, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm too skeptical. Yeah, that's, that's why on most competitions, uh, you know, they give you the rower. Yes. And, you, and you can't tamper with it in any way. Yeah. So definitely you you would you wouldn't uh it wouldn't be very acceptable to, you know, have your home rower and and make a record on that because of course you can you could have made modifications. See, if you want to approach if you want to approach the whole event of like, okay, we're going to do it for the 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 the, the kind of uh, more aspirational reason why we do sport. You know, we want to go, we want to show some athleticism, we want to have some fun, you know, we want to kind of, you know, uh, have a good time and, you know, whatever, fine. But I can never see an event like a world, world level championship being run online from home. Correct. I, yeah. do, I do not see this. I, I would not as a, I don't know, I would never kind of take this serious enough as a spectator or as an athlete personally again i would love to hear from people what do they think but um i i yeah no no not for me i i am i want to see people uh struggle and suffer in in in, in person also that's also true (laughs) 
I mean, let's put it like this. One of the reasons why we like to watch sport is to see very skilled, very strong, very athletic people struggle. Suffer. And suffer. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's part of the part of the fun uh, of actually watching watching sport. Um I mean, we did talk a little bit about, you know, the technical perspective, but I can say as somebody ha- that has worked uh, for 13 years in luxury hospitality, and I have run a lot of events, uh, not sports events that much, but um, I do know a thing or two about events. And I can totally imagine, like, if, if not only World of Rowing would like to kind of run, but I'm sure that other organizations would also try to run events. Yeah. And again saying that events are things that happen on the same day and most likely live or close to real real time events and not all of the as i said um kind of challenges that uh, have been going for a long time and probably would keep going so of course you have like the huge time of like marketing and selling it and because it's a live event also how do you market you market to the world do you market to you know what i mean like cuz it's it could be so small it could be so big yeah also, I would say selling, like, do you want to, you know, kind of nailing down, do you want to do an event with 20 athletes, 50 athletes, 100,000, you know, more than 1,000? Um, these, I guess, could be very, very difficult to nail if you don't have um, kind of good experience. Um, also, uh, I, I would imagine if I'm running an event online, I would also try to hook up some spectators, especially if it's live. You would like to... You know, oh, of course. I'm just saying that there are so many sports events that are now streamed on, yeah, exactly. like, on YouTube. You can, you or can like... get a lot of viewership uh, on, on, on these online events. Yes. Yeah. But again, how would you do that? How would you make it interesting for people to watch? Would you, would you, would you sit there and watch for two hours, like little boats on a screen kind of moving, uh, like pixelized boats <laughs> moving? Well, well, first of all, there's Twitch and on, you know, like people watching games online. Sure, sure. And like huge numbers. So, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case. <laughs> but of course, uh, it would be much better to see, you know, know, the actual would, people. Yes, I would like to, I would like to see a little bit more. Yeah, maybe, or as I said, maybe you have like all those little boats, but you have like those like top athletes that you're expecting. It's kind of the watch, watch out for this one kind of people. Uh, yeah, have think, them have them like live streaming from home yeah, exactly i think it would be nice to have like live stream from each uh each uh, participant that would be crazy and then you know like you have these uh uh, uh commentators you know and people yeah, would exactly. be like switching and like look exactly, at this like a, live, like a live event exactly yeah. but imagine how comp- how difficult this would be again for data perspective it's one thing to stream the data from your rower it's yeah. another thing to stream a, a video yeah, exactly. And then it becomes the question of scale. Like, do you have 100 participants or 100,000? Which makes 000? a huge difference. Yes. Are we competing head-to-head, one-on-one, two people streaming from home? Or are we doing it from 20, 30, 40 athletes, 50 yeah. at a time, maybe more? Yeah, that could be absolutely uh, crazy. And I would also say that, you know, the dependency from a, from a like running event perspective, like from a, I would say, event organizer perspective, I could totally be freaked out of being dependent on platforms exactly for this reason that you, you know, maybe you outsource um, certain parts of your, uh, of your event. As I said, maybe let's say that you have never run events. Maybe you have run local events. Now you say, okay, let's move to the 21st century. Let's uh, be adaptive from the Corona situation. I want to now run online events. And, and then I'm dependent on platforms to take my payments, to do my registration, to kind of keep my athletes in, you know, in check and, you know, all these like submission of scores, results, streaming and so on. It would probably give me a lot of uh, sense of uncertainty and discomfort to know that I'm so dependent on platforms that, you know, there are not that many of them yet. I know that concept yeah. has not been, it's not new. And as we said, it definitely the whole life multiplayer online, uh, you know, Gaming has been going on for a long time, but, you know, not in sports. That's pretty yeah, new. Exactly. The, the sports aspect of it is pretty new. The sports application of it, new, yes. I would say. Um, and, and again, uh, you know, I will say scale is huge for so many reasons. Uh, for marketing, uh, you know, for selling, for uh, how do you want to promote this? How do you want to get your viewers? I mean, I guess, yes, you probably want to have it like really global, but just the simple stuff. If I have one athlete, like... 10 athletes from Europe, 10 from Australia, 10 from China, 10 from the States and so on. What time do I schedule my oh, event? Yeah. yeah. 
time zones are a thing yeah. exactly <laughs> and that and you know i guess that you know it's one thing for example when athletes from all over the world come for a world championship or an olympics event you know when they kind of arrive earlier they you know they kind of get used to the time zones they train maybe for a few weeks ahead in the area and the, what about events I mean, what do you do? Do you run it European time? Do you run it American time? Do you yeah. run it Asian time zone? Uh, Compromises. Exactly. Yeah. For, for your viewers, for your athletes, it seems very, I would say, uh, messy, you know, to the least. Yeah. Especially if you, if you want to run global events. Yeah, but that also presents technical challenges. Yes. So yeah, definitely scale has a big impact. Exactly. And I would definitely say that then it makes a little bit more sense running them locally. Yeah. You know, for for a lot of reasons. Uh, let's say a European event of this and this and that or whatever. But again, the world championship in rowing, you know, worldwide, people rowing from all over the world. What time, when and where? For sp- I don't know. I guess that would be uh, for other people to figure out. Um, yeah. And as I said, just issues with connectivity and messy registrations. And again, my hugest, my biggest problem with with that whole idea of like, how would you verify the scores? That's what I would, that, that's the first thing that I thought I would not, again, as I said, challenges is different. Challenges would do for fun. Hey man, do you, do you think that we can in one month run the distance from, uh, uh, from Aarhus to Copenhagen? Yeah, sure. Let's try. Let's challenge ourselves. Let's try to do it. Yeah. Let's get some more people in. But if I'm sitting there saying like, you know what, I'm going to be, I'm going to kind of smack the, the world record in whatever discipline. And I say, Hey, I did it. And I have a number to prove it. Yeah. The computer, I know, you know, the computer doesn't lie, but have I cheated the computer? Yeah, exactly. I'm not saying that the, 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 the ERG monitors lie, but have we cheated the computer? Yeah. And, and there are definitely so many ways we can do that. So again, yes, I know I sound like I'm like just really, you know, raining on everybody's parade, <laughs> but I just, um, I'm not saying that we can't run live events. I'm just saying that there are so many things that have to be done in order for people to turn around and say, oh yeah, that was a nice event. That was good. That, well, that really made sense. I, I, I enjoyed this. Rather than, you know, kind of more of an attempt. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't know. But that's, 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 uh, so yeah, what would you say? Like, how would you, how would you tackle? I mean, I guess it's not all bad. You know, it's not, it's not all bad, of course, but uh, I'm such a grumpy old man. Just but yeah, I'm very, very skeptical person, you know. Yeah, there are definitely. And uh, as we yeah, the verification is probably the biggest one. That's why I don't see official big official events being run online so far. Yeah. And these challenges have been solved. Some of them, of course, mm-hmm. not all of them and to varying degrees uh by certain companies i actually i want to i want to mention one company called swift how swift, swift. yeah swift okay with a z and a w and a wift yeah and a wift <laughs> <laughs> uh they are actually doing these kinds of uh, live events mm-hmm. and also challenges as well uh for sports of running and cycling yeah and i think it's a very nice solution all right what do and they do uh, you basically have either for running, you have a like a tracker that yeah. tracks how fast you are running. A GPS one. Or for cycling, you have a way to basically measure how fast you are going, whether that's like, a, I think they they call it a trainer. Was that with a real bike or on an erg or are you cycling outside or indoors? So there are different solutions. I think you can put your own bike on like a stationary, yeah, on like a platform that makes it stationary and measures you. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think there are also off the shelf bikes that measure you as well that you can use. What about herbs? Can you do it on the erg? Uh, that's a good question. I actually don't know. But I think it's usually made for for more of a regular like cycling bikes. So So what do they do then? But they run these online live events and I think it's really nice. I saw even uh, qualification events okay. for a real competition being run here in a sense of like for example the first ten people qualify. Alright. You know. Like an online qualifier kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, exactly. Alright. Hmm. And I think they have a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, they're pretty popular in the cycling sphere. How do they tackle scale again? 
Is it more like challenges or again running live events? Because again, online qualifiers could often be, you know, done in a in a in a challenge, in, in yeah. a challenge style again. Yeah. Because then you you allow people to submit their scores from that date to that date, and then you verify them somehow, and then you decide who qualifies. Again, this is not a what I think of a event, you know of an yeah. event. When I say event, this is not. Yeah, I, uh, as far as I know, they support both. Mm -hmm. So you can run, for example, against your friend, you know, from yesterday or whenever, whenever he actually did it in a challenge kind of mode. Style, yeah. Uh, but you can also do it in real time. Okay. So that's does it say good. how many people it can support in real time? Because again, that's the. You know, I, it, there's a difference between like a couple of people going against yeah. each other and having a thousand athletes streaming live uh, yeah, I, I competing think, against each other. Of course, scalability. I don't think I don't think it's very possible even to solve that question. Of course, there is a number at which it will become impossible. Yeah. Of course, they have hard limits. Yeah, okay, on, I'm, a, on, yeah on I'm going a little bit crazy with a thousand, but you know what I mean. Like it's not it it's. But I, I don't know what that number is for them. Exactly. I don't know how many I people... I mean, I know that they market. I'm just support. saying that I don't want to... Again, I don't want to say anything bad, but, you know, sometimes in a desire of, like, presenting your product in the best possible light, you know, you do say it and it could be a little bit misleading. And nobody wants to say, okay, our limitation is 5 or 50 or 500. Yeah. You know, you want to say we can run a multiplayer uh, live event where you can compete and a multiplayer requires... Two, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so I guess as, as long as you can do two, you can call yourself a multiplayer. Yeah, I'm so yeah, awful. That's but true. No, but again, I'm not saying I saw it. Also, it's it's it, it looks like a pretty cool. It looks like a pretty cool solution, but I'm sure it also has its limitation as every yeah. software product. So yeah, but definitely. kudos, but kudos. So then maybe maybe some of the rowing uh, events can uh, can outsource. Uh, uh, you know, maybe con contact Swift. I mean, they don't yeah. really do rowing at the moment, but I guess. There's plenty of time yeah. till 2021. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Make, maybe they can put it on the roadmap. Okay, concept two, if you're listening, just <laughs> contact Zwift uh, and we get just 10% of referral fee for, for that deal. <laughs> <Yeah>. so, <laughs> or a um, word of rowing, whatever. 10% uh, referral fee. So that's, uh, I think that's fair. Yeah, yeah probably. Exactly. Look at us, like Lauren Peters solving all the indoor rowing uh, issues, kind of providing solutions for all kind of life challenges. <laughs> <laughs> like like last time with the soap. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. All kind of challenges in life. If you if you want to solve them, just uh, come life to hacks. us. Exactly, life hacks, and <laughs> at least at least we have a lot of opinions. That's 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 for sure. So yeah, I mean, I think that that's pretty much it. That kind of covers it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's a topic that's going to be way more discussed as we come. And I would love to kind of follow up and see how different organizations will be dealing with these challenges. Again, it's really, really cool that, again, World of Rowing wants to kind of have the general attitude of like, you know what, we're going to run this, we're going to make it work. I, I really love that. See, that's, that's something that I really, really adore. But yeah, again, nice it is not, yeah, again, it is not uh, as simple as like, hey, let's just move this from, from yeah. life to, to, to the, to kind of the digital space. So yeah, I would love to hear from you guys. I mean, what do you think? Um, do you think that we are unreasonable or is that some truth? Do you will not, would you like us to do a little, uh, a little discussion of how you can, as I said, very nastily, uh, kind of, um, hack and try, not, not trash, but like, really nastily like live temper, yeah, exactly the, nastily the tamper rower, yeah. with your rower um, again you shouldn't do this at home but we should also be aware of of that this is possible it's not yeah. impossible yeah exactly so yeah that's pretty much it so again if you like this podcast i would love if you kind of uh like it and subscribe rate review and all the cool stuff you can do you can also find us on formfirst.app which is our website. You can also kind of read a little bit more about the product that we're building because um, believe it or not, podcast is not the only thing that we do, uh, even that we enjoy doing it very, very much. Um, yeah, and I guess uh, we'll see you in the next episode. Yeah. Yeah. See you, see you then. See you then.